Hello, this is Jacob again, and it's time for another fanfic reading. This time, I'm doing a reading of Flickering Vision by Ironsides. Enjoy! It was a normal night today, were free. Well, as normal as the night could be in this place. Harvest? Or Harvey, as he liked to be called. Moon sat at his desk, quietly sipping his coffee as he stared at the telegraph. He'd have been acting strangely for the past few hours, tittering a few times before stopping abruptly. While it may have been a pony at one of the other towns hitting it on accident, he quickly dismissed it when it happened a second, third, and fourth time. Now he had been staring at it, waiting for it to do something for the past hour. Things like this happening had been recorded previously, but no cause had ever been found. Sure, the every was known to be odd, but it never really played tricks on electrical instruments until the last few months. Some of the other Switch Shack attendants had said things about mysterious whistles, too. Most ponies decided it was just them imagining things due to the isolation for days at a time. Harvey, on the other hoof, was optimistic. He has always been interested in magical pursuits, but here being an Earth pony hadn't lent him well to the cause. So this happening was something that immensely intrigued him. After all, there was no way something like this couldn't be magical in nature. There was too much that was unknown about the power that be to write it completely off. A distant howl at the window caught his attention, his highly sensitive ears swimming to the directing the sound came from. To him it indeed sounded like a whistle, albeit very broken, like a record needle skipping horribly. The cutoff was clean before picking up a second later. That's odd, he said turning towards his orders. His eyes flicked to the clock on the wall. Ten o'clock in the evening. He drew a line with the tip of his hoof from the time of his papers to the schedule. No train was supposed to be heading up the mountain for the next four hours, the last having disappeared going through the opposite way two hours before. Shouldn't be any activity on the line at this time. Unless it's an unscheduled train. We would have sent word of such a thing, though. His face turned into a frown, his muzzle now facing the window, eyes peering into the icy cold of the night. It wasn't long before the howl returned, but far more pronounced now. It was close. Very close. Harvey darted towards the door, throwing it open and letting the biting cold rip past him. He stepped out onto the porch, leaving a hoofprint in the snow. Gazing off into the distance, he found what he was looking for. A light on the side of the mountain. In the moonlight, he could see the dark plume of acrid coal smoke pouring out of the exhaust stack. Harvey's vision began to blur. A blink later, the scene was gone. No engine or train in sight. This time, the whistle began again the vision appearing a few hundred feet from where it had last been. It kind of faded in and out of existence, though, like a ghost or something. It was blurry and undefined. He kept staring, slack-jawed and wide-eyed at his findings. The locomotive on the head end was nothing like he had ever seen before. It was massive in every sense of the word. No engine in Equestria could rival the size. The intermittence of the train was starting to lessen, gaining solidity amongst the snow and trees. The whistle call wasn't as broken now, allowing the musical nature of the note to cast itself over the mountain. Harvey blinked again, and the train vanished. He put a hoof to his head. Whoa! What am I seeing here? He asked himself silently. He waited for another second before turning back into the house and grabbing his coat, shrugging it on over his shoulders. His dark blue hoof snagged a lantern off a shelf and lit it, softly blowing on it to give the flame some life. Again he stepped onto the porch and sat in a chair. 
He did some very basic calculations in his head and decided it would be around 10 minutes before the ghost train would reach his position. If it was real, anyway. If 15 minutes passed and he didn't see it again, he would go to bed and file it under caffeine hallucinations. Justin Mathers was young, that was for sure. At only 25, he was half the age of most of his companions. His tenacity behind the throttle was nothing to shake a stick at, though, putting him in the higher ranks of the community. After being the first to run the 2023 Down the Tracks on her first shakedown runs, he was sure she could make it to the summit with no problems. Justin kept a steady hand on the throttle as the stocky Mikado fought for traction on the snowy rails. He lightly sanded the rails before him, trying to slip the wheels as little as possible. The loud, echoing box of exhaust from the stack resounding through the mountains, and himself as well. It had been years of hard work, bloodshed, and tears of restoration to get to this moment, and it was something he did not take lightly. His brow was furrowed, eyes looking off into the night as the oil lamp on the front of the engine cast a bright light over the tracks ahead. Before him stood one of the three tunnels on the Cheval Scenic Railroad. This one, tunnel number two, was guarded by a shack that should have long since been destroyed by nature. It had been 70 years since the original owner of the road closed down operations, leaving the rails to the forces of the mountains. Somehow it had survived, if only just barely. The Cheval Scenic had acquired the rights to the line after a vote went through town on the purpose of actually owning the trackage. After all, what good was an old mining railroad to a fledgling town? After years of rehabilitation, they soon had the line operational again. Diesels were the biggest source of power, though, being the only things that the road could get their hands on on such short notice. The 2023 was years away from operation at that point, so they needed something to move sightseers. Now that the hefty mic was running, more passengers would pour in like water from the falls. At least, that was the hope, anyway. Justin needed to prove the 2023's viability as motive power before anything could actually be done. That would be decided when she hit the summit with no problems. Justin blinked quickly, his vision getting hazy from the strain on his eyes. That was weird, he commented to himself. He kept looking, his vision going hazy for a second at a time. Hey, Rai, take a look outside, will ya? Riley Rayner sighed rolling his eyes. This better not be another one of your pranks. The lanky man pulled open the door to the cab and looked outside. I don't see anything weird. Look towards the head and you blind moron. Something seems off. Justin replied, rubbing his eyes. Riley did so and blinked himself. Yeah, it is weird. Like static almost. No real clear picture. That's what I'm saying. Justin glanced over. I've never experienced something like this before. He grabbed the whistle cord and sounded the required blast before entering a tunnel. Neither have I, admitted Riley as he grabbed the bell rope and began ringing it. Oh, my skin feels kind of tingly too. Maybe aesthetic charge? Nah, that can't be it. Nowhere near enough built-up static to cause something like this. Justin glanced outside again, just as the train passed the rundown switchman shack near the mouth of the tunnel. There was a figure sitting in the wooden chair, gazing up at him. Only, it wasn't a human figure. It was dark blue with blue-green eyes. Its jaw was wide with either fear or awe. Just you couldn't tell which. Both beings stared each other down, unable to make a single move as the train passed into the tunnel. The weird equinus thing vanishing as fast as it had appeared. The engineer fell back into his seat box, his hand slipping from the throttle as his mind struggled to come to grips with what he had just seen. Riley glanced over, his arm still pulling at the bell. What's wrong, Jay? 
It's almost like you saw a ghost or something. Harvest Moon could do nothing but stare. The massive steam locomotive thundered past him in a flurry of snow and condensed vapor. The drive rods, almost larger than life, flung around almost effortlessly. Harvey's green eyes flicked to the cab window, a kind of monkey-looking thing, clad in striped overalls and a cap, looking right back at him. Both of his hands gasped the side wall, his jaw agape. They shared a blink, just enough to snap Harvey out of it, allowing the train to pass into the tunnel behind him before waking out of existence once again. It took a few minutes for him to collect himself. With a deep breath, he threw himself back into the shack and grabbed a pencil and paper, scribbling down his findings. Slowly, he translated it into the dots and dashes for transmission through the wires. Hurriedly, he tapped it out, letting Annapoli and Everypoli know what he had seen. The most noteworthy part read, I need some pony trained in magical detection on the next train to Summit Switch House. Copy. Next train. So, that was my reading of Flickering Vision. I hope you enjoyed it. And special thanks to Ilya Leonov for voicing Harvest Moon, Jordan Martinez for voicing Justin Mathers, and Mark Heider for voicing Riley Rayner. Anyway, thanks for watching, and this is Jacob, signing off.